So first, of course, traditionally, they always want you to talk about your character, Margie. What can you say about Margie in this movie? I can tell you about Margie uh, that she's, I think she should be, I, she's up for sainthood in my book. She, she gets the Gandhi Award. <laughs> uh, so Amy Davidson should just, you know, be, we should all be venerating her because her level of patience and, uh, and by Amy, I mean the character that Margie is based on, uh, has, has endless patience and a huge heart. And she's just fierce, fierce for her children. And uh, I, I don't know, it was, it was not easy doing some of those scenes where I felt like I was taking a lot of crap. <laughs> and uh, so I don't, but, but Margie slash Amy doesn't feel that way. Can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? First responders. Yeah, support. yeah, yeah. Because because Mar Margie, my character Margie is a nurse, and uh, we have some scenes in the ER. You don't see her there too often, but uh, when we shot it, I already had um, enormous respect and awe for what nurses do. But now that we've been through this, and really uh, the, the 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 level of outrage that I feel that they are not paid properly and that they do not have uh, PPE and that that just people in the caring professions, uh, which are mostly women and uh, mostly people of color, are just they're just not paid according to what they contribute to society. And this is true of teachers as well. And um, hopefully times are going to change. For sure. But yet and still, you know, just like my stepmother, they, they go to work and they're heroes out there for us right now. You know, it's, it's been pretty awesome. Yes, but it's also dangerous to say that they're heroes because heroes implies that they shouldn't get paid. <laughs> and they are doing it because they're drawn to the caring professions and the service professions, just like uh, uh, my character Margie and her husband, a firefighter. That was a, something that was very key in their relationship and, uh, and what they loved about each other, how much they wanted to give back to society. They had that in common. Um, and that was that's something that really, that they're just natural. They're natural givers, but they still should get paid. <laughs> And also, like, I think it's really cool that, you know, we get to see the kind of behind the scenes of a nurse's life, that personal life that she has to also juggle while also doing that challenging job. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you see her at home and you see her with her kids. She really, my character doesn't, her inner life has kind of been numbed down right now. It's just, she's really numb. She's had a lot, she's fought really fiercely for her children and for, to, to keep their, uh, uh, you know, their education and the food on the table and all those things, but she hasn't really had much of an inner life, meaning like a personal life. She has her sister and her cousin, but she doesn't have really a romantic life. And uh, that's obviously not true for all nurses, but that's just for this particular character. That, uh, it's, it's, it hasn't been fun, I think, for her for a while. <laughs> really fun. <laughs> but then, of course, we meet, you know, uh, Bill Burr, Ray, <laughs> in the film. Yeah, yeah. And, and that her. totally reignites her. Yeah. Because that was one thing that was kind of clear. It comes out in the movie, too. Like, she has a type. She has a type. And she has that inside of her, too. There's a wildness. Like, you don't just work in the ER because, you, you know, <laughs> you, I mean, you are, you're a person who can handle adrenaline and kind of likes adrenaline. And that was another thing her, her husband had in common. Uh, so all of that kind of feisty fire gets reignited in, when she meets Bill. And, um, Bill's and and then, of course, she has her son, Scott, played by Pete in the film. That's also yeah. another challenge while she's juggling her own personal life and work. Can you talk about Pete's character, Scott? Pete's, Pete's character is, is 
so lovable and so frustrating. And uh, <laughs> he just is someone who's so empathetic and can, you can have a real heart to heart with, but it also, it's just throwing a fit. <laughs> like, like a child uh, and it's it's really he's it's his process of growing up do you think people will get to see a, a different side of Pete after watching this film I do I think so yeah I, I think so I think uh, you know we get to spend a lot a couple of hours with him and there's just you know, it's, it's very different from reading an article about him or hearing something, you know, on social media or something like that, or even just his SNL persona. Although we all know how much he always loved his mom. And, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you, you see the reasons why uh, he personally um, was traumatized, really. And, um, and he's not alone. The word of mouth, I don't know if you've heard, but there is a significant amount of buzz around this film. Have you heard about the positive reviews? I have heard from my friends and people that I know that are seeing the trailer that they really want to see it. That's yeah. really great. No, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, he can act. I'm sure that's, he can really act, so. <laughs> and um, just talk about uh, also working with Ma and Maude Apatow, Judd's daughter. <laughs> Uh, I felt so shy around Maud because uh, you know, I was, I thought, do they go home and talk about all of us when they get, I, I don't know, she's up today in that scene, <laughs> what was she doing, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I'm hoping that I was up to par, and, um, but she is the sweet, she's such a sweet, sweetie, 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 and uh, down to, play and have, have fun and to see, to see their dynamic. And I uh, ran into them at the theater a couple times, uh, you know, when after work and just that they, they were still together or <laughs> and they were just going everywhere, freaking frack going together. How would you describe their kind of, you know, yin and yang, the Scott and Claire dynamic, the brother and sister dynamic in the film? The Scott and Claire dynamic, he, uh, you know, adolescent, <laughs> just in a word, uh, the bickering. They really, really love each other a lot. They really look out for each other. You go through that kind of trauma as a family and you always, you, you, there's that protection that just develops for each other. So that's pretty evident in the siblings relationship at the same time that, uh, Maud's character is thriving his sister is thriving and he just he's frustrated and he kind of takes it out on her as well go back uh, to talk about Bill a little bit more you know this is this is kind of a big interesting role for him compared to what he's done in the past talk about working with Bill and the Margie and Ray relationship a little bit more I loved working with Bill Burr because he's make me laugh all the time but also he's he's a philosopher he really likes to talk out his feelings and the issues of the day and get different perspectives on what's going on in the world and there's always something really interesting to to talk about with him and uh and it's very relaxing because he's just going on and and you're already like you're creating this relationship and you just kind of melt right into the scene uh, he, it was it was really a pleasure. He really he cracked me. He cracked me up a lot. <laughs> About just that whole dynamic, because I think a lot of guys are gonna want <laughs> to relate to that with their mothers being single and now dating again. <laughs> well, I'd rather, actually really like to hear your story on the, about I'll tell that. Tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't, I don't really know what to say about that because it's already in the script and, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't know if it, I don't really know if that changed. I mean, that was something that hadn't happened in real life. We, we put that into the movie. So uh, we'll just have to ask Amy how that's going. <laughs> and then Judd, of course, this is your first time working with Judd. I've worked with Judd off and on for eight years now. Talk about working with Judd. Yeah. Well, I, I actually did get to work with him on Trainwreck. Amy Schumer introduced us 
and that uh, it was just a day in and out and he has such a different method of working it, the way the cameras keep rolling and uh, the way that the improvs come. They, it, it's just the, the atmosphere is very, very different, very liberating once you know the rhythm. But in that one day on train wreck, I didn't really know the rhythm. And I always thought, oh God, I hope he thinks I did a good job. I, I kind of just kind of came and went. And I mean, not the movie, just me. And um, I was just so happy to be invited back into the fold and to, to play with him again. Yeah. Obviously, you've seen um, some of his films, and so you know, like, usually that he kind of works in drama within the comedy. But yeah. uh, talking to him yesterday again, he really does feel like this is kind of the more one of the more dramatic comedies he's ever directed. Would you Would you agree, or how would you describe the tone? Well, I can tell you, I didn't know that going in, <laughs> so I'm like ready to like roll up my sleeves and be a ham and like really, and oh, we're, this is a I, this is a different tone, but it's a very very hard tone to strike, and um, I think in in any film that's probably the hardest thing to do is what is the tone. So I'm and to, and to branch into another layer of himself. Uh, it, in his filmmaking, another kind of space that he wanted to occupy and do it so well. It was incredible to to watch it happen and hear him listening for that tone on the set. And of course, you know, we're in this new day and age where we're sheltering in, even though things are starting to open up now. So people have been home watching a lot of movies, a lot of TV and content. Why, why would you say this is a, actually a really good film to watch at home since it's being released on demand next week? Yeah, it's, it's I, I'd like to see it both ways because I think uh, uh, seeing it in, in a movie theater will be a big raucous, a more raucous experience and there's nothing like being with a collective, but then having it stream and come into our homes, it's, it's really such an intimate movie and probably you're, People are sheltering with their family members, our um, closest people, and that's what, that's what the movie's about. So I think in another way, it's, it'll have like a, another texture to it. It'll just be like more of a whisper in your ear that gets, gets to you. If you had any other thoughts about the overall message or what you think people would get out of this film. It's really funny. It's always, it's, it's good to have a laugh to keep us all going. And at the same time, it's, there's a, it's a movie that has, a, it's about grief and processing grief. And it's about processing Pete's personal trauma, but also it's collective trauma. 9-11 was collective trauma. And uh, we're all going through a lot, obviously now. And so it's, it's one person's walking through his grief. Uh, and it sounds so heavy, but it's a very funny movie, but that's, uh, that's what I think is going on in this movie.